I am pleased to welcome you to our building community check-in today. I am Sharon Knight, President and CEO of Hope Communities, which is a nonprofit that's been providing housing and educational programs and support services to some of the most vulnerable in Denver for 40 years now. We started doing these shows when we began going into quarantine because we knew that many of the people that we work with would feel isolated, would want a good source of reliable information, and might need a little inspiration to help get through all of this. So we started three days a week, we've moved to two days a week, and soon we'll move to one day a week just to be able to touch in to make sure that you know that you are not alone. We are there for you uh, if you need us. We have lots of information on our website, which is hopecommunities.org. There's a special tab for COVID-19 and many, many resources. We also have a full listing of all of our staff with their contact information if you need to reach out. And you can always send us an email at info at hopecommunities.org. So we know that some people will watch this as it's released on Facebook and others will come back and check later on. So if you listen to this now and hear some information that you think anyone in your circle could benefit from, please forward them to this Facebook posting and let them know that we're there to help them as well. So we'd like to share a little bit of news each time with you. Uh, this morning in the New York Times, uh, I saw an article that said that the number of Americans dying from the coronavirus has started rising again. I think a lot of us have heard that. More than 800 died in the last three days, a three-day total that is 56% higher than during the same three days a week ago. So deaths have begun rising uh, primarily in the Sun Belt states where Numbers of cases are increasing as their restrictions have been decreasing and slipping away. So California and Texas reported a daily high in deaths earlier this week. Florida and Tennessee did yesterday. So um, we know that many people, including a person quoted in this article, Richard Cortez, uh, did say that, you know, this could be raising to a level of a tsunami if we did not take this seriously enough. And he said, obviously they are. So at this point, there are only two states, Vermont and New Hampshire, where the cases are actually decreasing. There's lots of states where they're staying fairly steady. Uh, and then in about half of the country, um, the spread has never been worse. So something to definitely keep in mind, um, as I mentioned during our last posting, we are getting tired of all of this, but we can't give up. We have to keep being diligent and trying to take care of ourselves and just be safe. So Denver Public Schools are also planning to have in-person classes five days a week this fall. Students would have to wear masks all day. They don't have shared desks, they have individual desks now. Um, they are making it possible, though, if you don't want your kids to be in school, to get the same classwork online. We know that a lot of the people that we serve still don't have great technology for that or don't fully understand how to connect with that. And so um, we're going to be doing some classes uh, in the next week, well, actually in the 21st. I will have someone from Right on Learning on this show who will help to understand how you can still get connected if you haven't yet, how you can learn technology, and then we'll be releasing some classes that are currently being um, designed and recorded that will tell you how to do very specific things with different types of computers so that your kids can stay on track with schoolwork if you need uh, for them to still experience school from home. So I realize that um, also that we've been sharing a lot of advice on the pandemic from experts around the country. And while it's important to get accurate information, sometimes that seems more theoretical. And so I decided to talk with a lot of individuals with different age groups, with different genders, with different personality types to see what some of the strategies they've been using that have been successful for them. So I kind of broke this out in different um, 
different generations so that we could see uh, if there were uh, variations depending on, on age. And for the most part, we're actually pretty similar. I will um, report on several of the conversations I have, but we're mostly similar. I think that could be partly because those are the people that I know and interact with. Um, but they, while we've seen some people who are more despondent and starting to rebel against regulations and more people who are quicker to anger, uh, the people that I've talked with have been able to keep those feelings more in check. And so I'm going to share their strategies and hopefully that'll be really helpful to you. I'm going to start bef before I get into that with a couple of quotes. And these are two things that come from a person called Vex King. And Vex King is uh, the author of Good Vibes, Good Life. Um, he has a huge social media following. Uh, he grew up in Hindi with a single mother. Often they were homeless, but he developed strategies to help him survive and thrive. And now he is um, a big player in the world of personal development. So one of his quotes is, some people will build a life around money, praise, and acceptance, but fail to identify a higher purpose. They'll chase moments that are temporarily satisfying their ego, other people, and their bank account. But when you follow direction temporarily, you will find yourself forever lost. So this kind of goes with some of what I heard people were considering as they were going through the pandemic. So it may make sense later on why I chose that quote. He also just posted 12 reminders to help us to center and get through. The past cannot be changed. Opinions don't define your reality. Everyone's journey is different. Things are always better with time. Judgments are a confession of character. Overthinking will lead to sadness. Happiness is found within. Positive thoughts create positive things. Smiles are contagious. Kindness is free. You only fail if you quit. What goes around comes around. So 12 interesting perspectives and thoughts that you might consider as you are trying to get through this. Okay, so let me start on the conversations that I had and I'm going to identify first some people. I'm starting with an older age and then coming down. So early baby boomers who would be 74 to maybe 66 um, I have a few different friends in this category that um, I've talked with. So some of their comments are, I am very careful. I have vulnerability around age and a few medical issues. So I keep really distinct social distance, wear a mask around anyone, usually even if there is good social distance. I have been very careful, even around family members who don't live with me. I've not been going to restaurants, but I have ordered out a couple of times. I actually feel unsure about even that because I'm not quite certain how uh, their sanitation regimen is. I do talk with friends and family members uh, on the, from the porch through Zoom or through FaceTime, but one of the things I hate the most is that I can't have any hugs. This group has also been spending a lot of time making masks for other people, which we sincerely appreciate at Hope Communities. We've gotten a lot of masks and we've been able to distribute them to people who live with us or who are our clients. So thank you so much to that group for making masks for us. There's a later baby boomer group that's maybe 65 to 56. Um, they're staying really active, walking a lot, biking, eating really, really healthy cooking at home, taking extra vitamins for immunity, uh, using a lot of Zoom, FaceTime, Google Duo, and House Party to stay connected with family and friends. Some people have actually been more connected with family and friends than they have before the pandemic. So it's really uh, helping. That's one of the positive aspects of this is that people are connecting more 
in maybe a meaningful and emotional way with their family members who they may not have connected with that much in the past. Um, so this group is starting to have very small groups together outside with plenty of social distancing. They do wear masks, have hand sanitizer and Lysol everywhere, uh, reading quite a bit, real books and also audiobooks, uh, sometimes while walking. Uh, really miss going to the movies and going to restaurants, but in terms of the movies, they're catching up on series of Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu. A lot of people in this group are still working, but mostly they're working from home. So we go down a little bit to Generation X, which we don't often talk about that much. These people would be between 41 and 55. Lots of reading going on um, by themselves, but the people that I talk with also are participating in book groups, mostly online through Zoom. But there were also a couple who started meeting um, recently outside on a porch or in a park and just having lots of distance. Um, the people I talk with are doing lots of puzzles, uh, the old fashioned kind, really complicated ones that are set out on the table, but also puzzles on their iPad or on the computer, um, thinking that they want to enrich their mind and keep uh, thinking in a creative way. So puzzles do sometimes help that. Um, I'm talking about jigsaw puzzles, but also what for people do Sudoku and crossword puzzles, things like that, to really keep their minds alert. Um, many of these people are still working, about half are from home and half from the office. There's a sense that they actually need to be in the office more to cover for younger um, staff members who have kids at home. And so they've been trying to pull their weight and to support uh, work that has to be done in person so that those parents with young kids can attend to them for school or whatever they need to do. Um, many of these people have learned to use technology a lot better and have learned to use more apps that they never used before, um, keeping to themselves because they also do have a lot of parents uh, who are vulnerable. So in Xennial, which is kind of an early millennial age, I talked with um, Gwen, uh, who's that age group is between 35 and 45. Um, so they're starting to look at hobbies. So Gwen took up cross stitch, for instance, because it's something that can keep her mind and her body a little bit active um, so that she's not racing and thinking about other things, but she needed a new hobby. Uh, lots of walking, lots of fresh air. Um, she and her husband are trying to cook at least one new recipe a week because they're not going to restaurants at all. Uh, and really not ordering in much at all, uh, and they're kind of getting tired of cooking so much because they used to diversify a little bit differently. Um, they're wearing masks, keeping social distance. Um, they, they're doing outside chores, like going to the grocery store only once a week and being careful about the time that they go and um, doing all of the sanitation procedures uh, that will keep them as safe as possible. Uh, they're still working mostly at home in the beginning, but have started going to the work in the office more often uh, with good social distancing and good protocols. So one of my neighbors who falls into that early millennial group also, um, they have kids at home. So they're trying to uh, do some of the regular work from home and a little bit at work, but just trying to juggle everything with their kids. Don't like being a teacher, don't like being a teacher and an employee at the same time, uh, it's pretty exhausting. Uh, and they don't feel as effective as teachers as they believe that their kids' teachers are. Um, so they're doing a lot of gardening, fixing up their house, doing a lot of organizing um, so that a lot of yard projects are finally getting done. They're also trying to come up with things to keep the kids occupied, like family bike rides and game nights and um, spending a lot of time helping the kids through this to uh, understand why they need to not spend as much time in close proximity with their, with their friends either. So that's, that's really kind of tough uh, and emotional work for them. So later millennials, um, 26 to 35, I talked with Jake, uh, who is reading a lot, reading a lot of books, catching up on new series on Hulu and Netflix and HBO, doing really hard workouts uh, with weights, 
uh, running hills, things like that to, um, to stretch the physical fitness, um, partly because of that feeling of being constrained. And so that really helps to have specific goals and to get that energy out that is, that is growing. Doing a lot of cooking in, but um, also get some takeout delivered to the house. Um, is on some regular apps and just puts the order in and then the food arrives 30 minutes later. So that's been common for Jake uh, at that later millennial age. Uh, music has been important, listening to music, um, also playing and recording music, um, playing around with blogs and podcasts, um, doing monologue and soundtracks, things like that, trying to use the creativity uh, to help um, him through this time. So some of his friends are getting together more, but they're also pretty careful um, because they, um, they happen to have people in their lives who are more vulnerable. So being respectful of that. I spoke with another um, person who was in this generation who yesterday, and she is really focusing on her spirit and well-being. She is She's been away from the office uh, and from people, uh, even though she's working remotely from home, but she is becoming, because she has so much time by herself to think, she's becoming more conscious of a general public's attachment to material things. She keeps hearing angst from a lot of people that they can't go to restaurants, they can't get haircuts or get their nails done. And um, she's trying to, as she's, um, said decolonize and building her personal self up more rather than focusing so much on what society expects people to do at her age. Um, she's learning new habits, uh, skateboarding and crocheting are two of the new hobbies that she has acquired. She's reading more and she's listening to podcasts because she's really in a period of self-development. I think she might like some of that Vex King quote that I said earlier on. So um, Gen Z is, um, I talked to a couple of different people actually. We have a few staff members that I talked with uh, and I have a little bit more detail from them. Uh, so this is an age, it's a pretty broad age, eight to 25. Um, I reached out to Laura, for instance, who's a staff person who identifies herself as a natural introvert. She's been being pretty careful um, she's done a lot of things virtually, alone with her family and also with friends. So she's cooking and eating meals together over Zoom and Skype and FaceTime. So her friends will all cook stuff and then they'll just eat and talk to each other while they're eating. So it feels like they're being able to get together and actually share a meal. She does virtual game nights, so Monopoly, Uno, uh, Trivia Pursuit. Um, there's a website also called House Party uh, that allows up to eight people to chat at any given time. Uh, and that app actually comes with some, some games in it. So she's been using that. And I've actually heard a few other people in the office say that they have been using that app um, to try to connect with people. They've had virtual happy hours. Uh, and then she's done lots of uh, workouts. So there's all kinds of online workout apps right now. Uh, and sometimes what she does is that she'll call a friend and they'll take a yoga class together. So they'll have FaceTime while they're also doing the class. Um, she also does that a little bit with, um, with Netflix parties where they'll watch a movie together and they've done some travel together, like taking the virtual tours of the Taj Mahal, the Palace of Versailles and some other places. So really using the, uh, the apps out there to connect with people uh, and kind of just in time uh, doing things together so they can talk about it and they don't feel like they're really isolated. Um, she has been doing some outside activities as well, hiking, picnics in the park and tennis, um, but looking at how to do that in a safe way. So she does work and she's been working remotely uh, for a couple of months, but then started in the office quite a bit more. Um, but the office does have really good social distancing, a lot of safety protocols, and the requirement that people wear a mask around other people, that they take temperatures coming into the building, and that there's limited numbers of people at any one time in any office or room. So 
lots of procedures. Another Gen Z person that I talked with, Grace, identifies more as an extrovert, and she shared these details about her strategies. So she says, I'm a really social person pre-pandemic. I had three to four social events every week. So my go-to when isolation started was to try to remain at that same level of connectedness, but online. So she's done Zoom happy hours as well, Zoom game nights, Zoom trivia, workouts, Zoom classes. Obviously, Zoom is really important in her life. She uses FaceTime to connect more on a one-on-one -on -one setting, and then she tries to text friends to check in on them as often as possible. So she's watched movies with friends, which is its own app, uh, and then um, through Netflix, uh, which is um, you start a Netflix movie at the same time, and then through Facebook you can continue or FaceTime to you know have a conversation about that. So um, she says that it's been really important to use technology to stay connected, but it's really exhausting. Connecting over a screen is not the same as connecting in real life, as we all know, and it takes a lot more energy. It's not as comfortable and it's not more fluid. So sometimes uh, she gets a little overwhelmed with that and just needs to um, make sure that she has personal time as well as screen time. So you've got to learn what your balance is and um, it's it takes some time to understand because you want to stay connected, but it really does seem to be a lot more, um, take a lot more energy to do that. And so you have to monitor how that is affecting your physical and your mental health. So she's getting back outside as things have warmed up. And she's also listening to a lot of audiobooks. Um, she does that while she's cooking, while she's doing laundry, while she's doing lots of things because it's really nice to have a voice in the background for her so that she doesn't feel um, like she's really alone. And one of the apps she found is called Libby. It's a free app that lets you connect your library card to your phone so you can download any book. And um, she just loves that app. Music also has been important to her. And I love what she says. She says, although it might seem odd, I found a lot of songs that talk about breakups have felt really relevant. I kind of feel like life broke up with me unexpectedly. And I'm having to, to reel from that heartbreak. So when she listens to songs through that lens, somehow it is comforting her. And it's just one of the things that she's found has been really helpful. So it's an interesting perspective um, that life has broken up with her or with us unexpectedly. Our whole worlds have been put on edge. And so uh, she found this way to to deal with it. So I also am going to share a video with you of a really young um, Gen Z person uh, at our uh, Northeast Park Hill site. Um, Melissa just graduated from high school and she is going to share some strategies with you um, that she thinks are wise and helpful for people her age. So we're going to cue the video right now. Hey guys, my name is Arla Flores. I'm 18 years old and I'm a graduate with the class of 2020. I know that there are a lot of questions about COVID-19 going around and having really large communities who happen to be close with one another. Um, I'm here to talk about it. I'm here to answer your questions. Um, I'm here to, you know, give comments, give suggestions, give reminders, reminders most of all, because it's important now we go through all this together. So, um, yeah, stay with me for the rest of the video. Firstly, I want to start off with that we are not over with this pandemic. I know that we're all very tired and we're all very bored in our houses, but um, we just have to stay strong. We have to keep in mind that this might not almost be over. It might not even be the middle of it. But we have to stay strong, we have to stay positive, and we have to stay close to a lot of people to make sure that they're all, they are also okay. Um, nearly 70% of people in the U.S. tested positive as of May 30th were younger than 60 years old. We have to be thinking about the safety of, the other, of others and not just, you know, 
how we're feeling. We're not the only people in this pandemic. We're not the only people being affected. There are elders and there are all the younger generations. Um, our future and you know our elders who are full of wisdom, who can help us whenever we need help. You know, um, just think about them. Think about other people, even if they're strangers. Think about it like they're your family member. You will do anything to keep them safe. Um, the easiest way to care for other people is by wearing a mask, by staying your six feet distance. Um, if we just follow these rules, we can be done with the pandemic. There won't be cases. There won't be having states reclosing again, you know. Um, as I said before, I am a graduate of high school. Um, I didn't get to throw a party. I didn't have to, I didn't get a graduation as I wanted to. It kind of just felt like the ending of a normal year. Like I didn't graduate. Like it just felt like I was, you know, just going into like a regular normal year, you know. And I'm going back to school in the fall for college. Um, <laughs> it hurt and it felt sad, you know, but, um, I wouldn't want anyone to be affected or I wouldn't ha want anyone to be at risk. Um, I also said that I have my birthday. Um, oh wait, no, I didn't say that. Um, I turned 18 just last week. Um, and I also wanted to throw a big party. Um, and I've been planning it since forever but um with the whole pandemic um i wouldn't want to have people come over and risk their life just because i want to have a little fun um it's just good to have like a small gathering with just my family because i didn't want to put anyone at risk um i wouldn't want to put um, myself at risk or my parents or my little brother so And I know how things can be really frustrating and disappointing at the time. Um, just remember that you're not alone in this. Um, there are others. Um, so just look out for them, care for them. Um, and remember to always stay positive. Um, you can be the ray of sunshine coming through a window. Okay, so even though we have to stay socially distant. There are a bunch of ways to stay connected with friends and family. I can give you some ideas. I personally write all my friends, all my family members, a message saying, A, um, just a reminder, I still love you. Um, I also like going to the park with my friends and going on drives, um, even just to get something to eat. Uh, it doesn't have to be something so serious. Uh, you can also share your music. Um, with your friends, um, even if they don't like it, still share it. They might like one song, um, or try something new. Try something you didn't, you haven't tried before. Drawing, reading. You might like it more than you think. Coloring and all that stuff. Um, just remember to stay positive about yourself. Love yourself. Social media is another way for us to stay connected. Um, there is a positive side and there is a negative side. It's always best to stay on the positive side because you get to see a bunch of good things. Um, I personally like to see, um, you know, like protesters coming together or, you know, people um, reaching out to others. But then again, we get into the negative stuff, which is, you know, um, deaths or more cases. And it's just, it's okay to take breaks sometimes because in the end, you're going to see something on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok that you wouldn't want to see. So it's okay to take breaks, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, it doesn't matter. Your feed will reload and give you more positive stuff. Doing stuff like taking a break from social media is 
super important for our mental health. The unknowns of everything is really scary. Knowing that you don't know what's going to happen in the future is really scary. Um, there's still so much that you can do and there's still so many opportunities that you can take. Um, just, you know, follow your dreams. Um, for example, I'm excited to say that I'm starting college in the fall. Um, I wasn't going to let a pandemic get in the way. Um, I wasn't going to let it, you know, ruin my future, but I'm planning to study accounting, bookkeeping, and tax preparation. I like working with numbers. Stay positive as much as you can, um, but also know that there are people who will be willing to help you if you need it. You're not alone. Um, I really like to focus on keeping a positive environment for my family, my friends, and anyone else around me. Physical health is something that we should also talk about. Um, remember to have good sleep. You don't have to go to sleep at 3 in the morning and wake up at 3 in the afternoon. No, you don't have to do that. Um, try to get your, your sleep schedule a little back to normal. Um, drink as much water as you can. I know there's a lot of people that say that water isn't doing anything. It is. Trust me. Um, eat your vegetables. Eat your fruits. They're really good if you just, you know, try to actually like them. Um, I personally like to go on a walk. Um, I like to have time to myself. And that's another way to get some good exercise. Um, staying active for even 30 minutes is awesome. Um, you don't have to stay working out for five hours just because someone else does it for five hours. Um, cleaning your room. Cleaning your room is also um, a really good workout. Um, and work, washing dishes, um, you know, you get a little hand movement, you get a little um, like workout that you would usually do like at a gym, you know, just by picking up a sock off your floor, picking up your stuffed animals, doing your bed. Um, that's really good. <clears throat> that's really good. Um, for your health, for your physical health, and for your mental health. Um, you're being clean and you're being organized. So that's something you should keep doing. Though you probably heard this many times, we're in this together. It's not, this pandemic is not over yet. Keep wearing your masks, keep respecting the six feet distance, and try to have a little fun. Stay positive. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, or you want to leave, your opinion or you want to tell me your opinion, um, you can absolutely, you know, leave it down below. I'll read it. No problem. Um, but stay positive. Stay positive. And then that's it. <laughs> can we start it over? <laughs> okay. Um, stay positive. <laughs> What was I going to say? I was going to say something. Hang on. I have it. Wow. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing your thoughts and your advice with us. I hope that these tips um, that Melissa shared and that we shared from other folks uh, during this show are helpful for you, that they help get you through this pandemic successfully. Well, Colorado has been doing pretty darn well in terms of keeping the virus in check. There have been some recent increases in cases as restrictions were lifted. And so we really want to um, make sure that you keep vigilant and paying attention to the guidelines. I know a lot of people are really tired of all of the restrictions and modifying their lives, um, but this thing is not over yet. And we've really got to look um, at what we do in terms of how we stay healthy for the long term. We want you to be happy. We want you to be healthy. We want to be able to keep working with you for many years to come. So please hang in there. As part of every Facebook live show, we also share a book review. And as you heard uh, from all of our testimonies, reading has become really important to people. And so we've shared book reviews that are 
videoed from friends, from community members, from neighbors, from staff, so that you know what are some of the great books out there uh, so that you can invest your time in reading something that's already been vetted. So our review today is by the author, Helen Thorpe. Her latest book that's just coming out is called Finding Motherland. And it is a collection of six essays about food and migration. She shares the history of her own life and her mother's life uh, from Ireland and how that has shaped her and how it has affected her own sense of motherhood. She celebrates neighbors and uh, immigrant stories that are really poignant. So this is the third review that we have had by Helen Thorpe, who is just an exceptional writer and someone that I personally admire a great deal. I hope that you'll get a chance to listen to her review and even more importantly, to read her essays. I know that she has always provided great information and great insight into the, the human life form for me. And so uh, please give that a whirl. Um, I think you'll really enjoy reading Helen Thorpe. So I hope you take care of yourself this week, that you have a good weekend, and that you find ways, whether from our tips or others, to get through this pandemic in a really healthy way. If you need anything at all, please check out our website at hopecommunities.org or send us an email at info at hopecommunities.org and one of our wonderful staff members will get back with you. Take care and we will see you next week.